this is my studio. This is where I work most days. I'm either working on lots of drawings, a lot of paintings, but I work a lot with musicians and record labels. So you might've seen some things. Like I know the Luzo tour merch that I did is out. Yeah. But yeah, this is like my studio. And this is some of your other graphics. Yeah, work, right? this is my um, other practice. When I'm not doing like an art practice of drawing and painting, work that's more meant to be seen in like the gallery museum context, I have this output to want to just make stuff. It's because I came from a background of streetwear and skating, where I used to design a lot of graphics for skateboards, for clothing brands and streetwear. So there's always this itch to want to design graphics for things. In my younger years, all of my friends who I used to run around with all grew up and became like lead designer at this brand. And then they're always hitting me up for graphics. And I resisted it for a point because I was kind of over it. But then I realized, oh, I can just do this instead of working another job because I know how to do it. And it's it comes pretty easy to me. So those are like my three practices. It's like yeah. this fine art practice, design studio practice, and then like me being a freelance designer slash artist for various record labels, streetwear brands, whoever else wants to work on stuff together. So a lot of my work does draw from popular culture and TV, trying to draw like parallels between like, why is The Sopranos or why is this related to maybe some scene I might see in art history. Tony on a horse, versus like these like Napoleon on a horse painting. So yeah. I'm, I'm always drawing these parallels between those two. But for the last three years, because I couldn't be around people, so a lot of my work too is evolves around like people I know, like either portraits of them or drawings or paintings. And since I couldn't be around them, it's like, okay, well, what's the next version of that? I go back to like the popular culture, but also yeah. the media references. Yeah. And I like to describe it as this like practice of being a couch potato. Yeah. and watching TV, that's how I'll draw or I'll make something yeah. from that, then being the opposite, like yeah. going out to actually see friends. For three years, I couldn't really see friends. Yeah. So I did a lot of things like watch The Office mm -hmm. over and over, or finally watch yeah. The Sopranos because I was never old enough to watch the show. Flipping through my phone like everyone else and seeing these little bleeps of like culture, like this Uzi drawing, of yeah. the rapper Little Uzi Vert. That yeah. was a very brief week of this yeah. meme. But I also like the idea of framing and stopping these moments in time because we see them and they're gone a week later, but they somehow live in like our memory. So like drawing it or painting it kind of slows it down some more and lets it sit more in this space that I think occupies like this pop cultural space, but also art historical space. But yeah, like that's my practice is like a lot of that there's a lot of different bodies of works too that I work on yeah. at the same time. So it all really depends. But the way I set it up here is like, they're all kind of mixed together. Before we did the open studios, I wanted to see what they look like together because when I was making each of these, I was doing them small on my lap or on the couch at home. And then they would just be put away in a folder. Yeah. So seeing them together like this is really nice because it sort of has this like loose narrative. This book, Spoonie Sleeping on Sculpture. So it's Spoonie. Noted because of copyright, Spoonie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a series that I did of these drawings of this dog named Spoonie sleeping on these famous sculptures. But in my sketchbooks, I would be drawing like sketches for sculptures I want to do in art history. And yeah. then I started thinking about like my dogs and how dogs have these sleeping habits. I don't know if you've ever seen when dogs see public art, they don't know what it is. So they'll yeah. pee on it, yeah. they'll sleep on it. This series is sort of about that. And, um, but it's also like my interest in art history. I love the series, it's so You fun. could just do your version of these sculptures, but you kind of created a way to tie them all together, going out to a museum, seeing it yourself, starting to sketch it, and then you're like, okay, my signature's the yeah, spoonie yeah. on top. You know, the one thing we always are taught as artists is like, how do you have your own style, right? But like, it came from like this world of graffiti and skating and comic books, but also like studying Warhol a lot and like Duchamp and how are we, recontextualizing or reappropriating images. So when I made this, I like the idea of thinking about it as like, well, anyone can draw this, yeah. right? Like, even though I'm drawing it, these two things that already exist, I'm drawing them together. Yeah. It kind of makes it mine. Yeah. But I like the idea that someone can just draw this their, themselves because it's not specifically tied to my style. It's like a drawing of a famous sculpture by a famous artist. So I love the layers that happen within those bodies of works. A lot of my work sort of, it does that. Like there's multiple layers that either reference or joke about our history, but also they're all sort of identity driven a little bit of my own personal space. Tell us about what it's like to work in a community of artists like this. Our studio has a lot of different artists. You know, we're, we're always isolated. We're always kind of stuck in the space. 
little tunnel vision to ourselves. But what I love about coming in here is like, I'm in my studio, but then, you know, every now and then I'll go next door and see what my buddies are up to. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll go out, go get lunch go have a smoke break or whatever else, or go to a bar. Like it really drives up a good energy that I really like about having an artist community because as much as I like being alone, having people come and see your work and talk to you about your work and dialogue really helps me come to terms with why I'm making the work. And it also helps me stop. I'll be painting something and I think it's bad or I think it's good. My buddy Conrad who's next door, he'll come in and he'll be like, oh, this is good. You should just leave it alone. And then for him to say it's good, I'm like already happy that it's good. So yeah, yeah working with all these different people and communities is like my favorite.